Director for Preservation Greensboro. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit that own and operate the Landwood Mansion down in that direction as a house museum and as a event rental space. Um, we do these tours during the summers. Uh, we start April and September is about towards the end of where we end because of the sun getting ready to set. Um, so thank you so much for coming on our last tour of the season and don't worry we're getting ready to do the schedule for next year and it will be everywhere. Um, towards the end of the tour, do uh, stick around. We have some flyers or some uh, brochures for Preservation Greensboro that we can hand out if anybody's interested in becoming a member. Um, but with further ado, let's start the tour. So I am going to walk through the crowd but stay faced towards Temple Emmanuel so that you can look at it and not me. Uh -huh. Okay, so we are looking at Timbo Manuel. It is one of three religious structures standing within a block of each other on Dr. Green Street by the time of its eruption. It was built in 1923, designed by New York architect Tober Upjohn. Uh, it is a neoclassical revival style inspired by Turo Synagogue and Newport Road.
gotta check out these doors. Yeah, they are. Look, I'm going in to see. I know. Saruman is in there. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, sorry. That's cool. Look at that big old door. Ooh, we're inside the church. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, there are actually two organs. The organ in front is what he plays the most. From that council right there. And when he gets to the last verse of the song and wants to crescendo, he'll be using both organs to keep his play right here. Uh, here we get a chance to come to one of his organ concerts in the sun, Sunday evening. That's quite something. Mm -hmm. Good as well. Wow. How's, how's the membership holding up? Fairly good. We've been at uh, right at 2,900 members. I see. Consistently hmm. for several years. The Star of David window that we were talking about yep. is the last one uh, in the choir loft up there that you can see. You can walk back there and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. This is just gorgeous. Wow. Look at the detail on that ceiling. I'll turn her out of Canada actually because it's worth nothing. 12, 15 years ago. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful. I've never been in here. So this is right across the street from the Temple Emmanuel. And in one of these paintings, they have the Star of David to represent friendship between the two. Right there. It's really hard to see. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Wow. You can see the pews down here. There are a lot of people on this walking tour. <laughs> People. House first. So the West House was built by Minnie and Edward Lyon in 1912. On the date of uh, December 12, 1912, the Greenboro Patriot newspaper announced that Mr. and Mrs. E. W. Lyon have moved into their home in the Fisher Park. The Lyons were well known within Greensboro at the turn of the century, having previously lived in a Grand Victorian residence several blocks closer to the center city. Edwin Lyon was a mining engineer who consulted on various copper, silver, and coal mines within North Carolina. He even owned a gold mine in North Carolina. The house is inspired from classical architecture of the colonial period, featuring a central gable topped with a demi loom window, a generous front and is topped with a balustrade. To each side of the symmetrical facade are trying to pay windows, brick corner pilasters, and a dormer window. What? The, the formal architecture of the house was to evoke tradition, substance, and qualities during the Edwardian era in history. The line sold property to Mary and Charles Dorset in 1915. The house remained in it, the family until 1938, at which time it was heavily remodeled with interior and exterior changes. The house was deteriorated severely in the early 20th, uh, 21st century before being sold for complete restoration in 2016. Um, it is currently, we're not sure if it's split between residential and um, commercial. There's issues for various commercial like items, um, and she has also downloaded the idea of turning it into a bed and breakfast. 
Uh, now the house next door, which is beige, um, isn't actually on the tour, uh, but I do have a wonderful family friend who is the granddaughter of the creator of Vic's Staple Rub um, in town. Yeah, and she swears up and down. But she was born in the house. Heard about 1923, 1924. And up until recently, it was white with dark green shutters. Um, the new buyer is, has decided to keep it split up into the four apartments that it is split up into tonight. Um, we have two apartments downstairs and two apartments above. Um, and he's been keeping it per apartment for, I'd say, a good decade or so. He has no inclination of turning it in um, to single families again. Okay, so we are going to continue in that direction. Uh, Fisher Park Circle, we're going to turn left. Oh, that's pretty. Look at this abbey. It's all edged. <laughs> you did something and made it. Yeah. Well, I said, I can't get the whole house. You can? You may do a smaller move, you know. That's as far as it goes, I think. I can stretch it out. I've got a 16 by 1. They left the light on in yonder. <laughs> I've always loved this house. This lovely white house on the corner here is the Hewitt House. Well, William A.J. Hewitt and his wife, Jessie, bought the corner lot of North Owl and Fisher Park Circle in 1914. He was from New York City and the president of North Carolina Industrial Bank. They had died in 1939, but his wife and family stayed in the house until 19. people here. but mainly 
commercial, he designed a good portion of NC and T's buildings, as well as NC Central's buildings as well. He really liked to focus on historically black colleges back then. Um, and he worked for Wallenstein all the way up until the 60s, when it's 1962 to 1988 to his death. He worked by himself with a few other buddies, um, a few military buddies and a few friends from his engineering days back at A&T. So we're going to go next door. Just one house down. I know. Pretty flowers. It's for sale. This house is for sale. This is the Mallory and Charles Benbow house, built in 1913. One of the earliest examples of craftsmen in Greensboro. The craftsmen um, bungalow style began in Southern California where South Asian and East Asian features blended to create an exotic and innovative style well suited to sunny climate. Uh, so Charles David Bimbo Jr. <laughs> There's so many people there in the road. <laughs> so Charles David Bimbo Jr. was well known in the social and business circles in the King City as, and was a member of a well-respected Bimbo family in Oak Ridge. Bimbo's profession was real estate and auto sales. He was the proprietor of the Bimbo Long Sales Company, part of the local distributor of Hudson and Dodge cars. And he married Marjorie Long in April of 1911. In April, April 1913, the Greensboro Patriots stated, Mr. and Mrs. Charles D. Bimbo Jr., are moving into their new home on North Park Drive. This new home is a 12-room bungalow, modern and beautiful, and is lovely ornament in the Fisher Park section of the city. The shingle quad structure features a handsome stone foundation with porch support of Mount Airy granite, likely hand-laid by the master stonemason Andrew Le Leopold Schlosser. The Asian-inspired features of the two-story include exposed wrapper tails, knee braces, and wide overhanging during the Great Depression, the Bimbo family became indebted to the Prudential Insurance, and the family struggled to maintain ownership of the house. It was sold to Prudential in 1937, who turned around and sold it to a <laughs> 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 Meredith is a board member of Preservation Greensboro. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, Greensboro is a city that appreciates the past and its sense of history as well demonstrated in the story of the King Chair. The chair was constructed in the backyard of the home of the master stonemason Andrew Leopold Slosher a native to Sylvania who moved to Greensboro in 1899. Schlosser was selected to complete numerous commissions on fine homes and parks throughout Greensboro, but he is best remembered for his contributions to Fisher Park. And the next house we're getting ready to see is an all stone. Um, Fisher Park. 70 years after his death, the Schlosser family wanted, to, wanted a safe and public site for the fanciful comp composition that is the King Chair. Working with the city of Greensboro and the Fisher Park Neighborhood Association and family members um, were able to place the park here in Fisher Park's West Park. Today, everyone can enjoy this whimsical piece that is designed as one of Greensboro's earliest artists, surrounded by homes and bridges, also by his hand. Hmm. Okay, so, did everybody see those steps? It's beautiful out here in, this, in these woods. You could come out here and just murder a whole football team and get away with it. Hey, there's an uprooted tree over there. There's a dude looking at it. This is a nice little wooded area out here. Look at that tree. Oh my god. That was recent too. It looks like it fell over recently. It's still green. Yikes. 
Little creek. And back up the steps. Oh, Christmas lights. <laughs> Somebody is really early. You videoing it? Trying to. She's not on the open side. Christmas lights. Yes. Not working. Oop. Low branch. Oh, look at that place. Oh, that's nice. That's beautiful. Look at them granite steps. I can't see it from here. I think we're getting close. <laughs> okay, so we are standing in front of this nice big white house. So we're going to look at that one first. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, this, oh, that didn't help. Okay. This neoclassical revival house was begun in 1987. Car! Car. <laughs> to the left! Right? Yep. Yeah, that's pretty. Well, it doesn't help that I'm dyslexic, so. Okay. Um, begun in 1907 by architect Richard Gambier for insurance executive George Grimsley. Grimsley? Grimsley? Oh. Grimsley. Grimsley. <laughs> I'm from here, I'm sorry. Um, overlooking the Greensboro's Fisher Park, two-story frame house features a stone foundation, a broad porch of iconic ionic columns that engage a porte cochere and a high-hipped roof line pierced with hipped dormer windows and a tall corbelled chimney. Um, so for those who don't know, a hipped roof is a roof that comes in to a point from all four directions. So a gable is just from two directions where you'll have a triangle on the end, but a hip roof is from all four directions. Oh yes, and the corbelled, if you look at the chimneys um, at the top, you'll see how the chimney is relatively straight, and then it has a few courses that jut out um, pretty far up, and then also at the top, that is called a corbelled chimney. They are very skinny chimneys. The design of the house blends classical elements with features associated with colonial revival architecture, including a main entry flanked with side lights and a transom, a bay window up on the second floor, um, the, and use of louved shutters. The house was first occupied by Grimsley, then president of Jefferson Standard Financial Insurance Company. Years later, it was purchased by Fielding Fry, a one-time mayor of the, of the city and founder of North Carolina National Bank. In the case of the Grimsley Fry House, the classical ionic columns are scaled to a colonial revival porch. Due to the colonial revival style, the arrangement of windows and doors is formal and symmetrical, with the front flanked sorry, I thought I heard car. With the front door flanked with side lights. The stonework associated with this property is notable, featuring Mount Airy granite, and that is attributed to the craftsman Andrew Leopold Schlosser. It was listed individually on the National Register of Historic Places in October of 1991 and locally de designated as a landmark property in September of 1984. So we're going to stay here, but we can, once we're done talking, we'll just take a slow stroll by the next house. And unfortunately, there's a tree down in front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it actually makes it a little easier to see the house from here. Um, so this is the Latham Baker House, built in 1908. It was commissioned by James Edwin Latham, a Greensboro cotton broker who was prominent in the civic development of the city throughout the early 20th century. Wife Maud Moore Latham and daughter May Gordon Latham Kallenberger 
expressed interest in history by serving on numerous historical societies throughout the state of North Carolina. Both played pivotal roles in the reconstruction of Tryon Palace's palace in Newburgh. Constructed by the fall of 1908, the house is a rare greenroom example of a residential prairie school architecture. The philosophy of style that was emphasized was strong horizontal lines of the American prairie. In keeping with the style, the house displays a pronounced horizontal emphasis that is accentuated by broad overhanging eaves, a pronounced belt course of granite between the first and second floor, uh, and elongated granite window boxes. Other distinguishing features include the random laid granite exterior walls and green tile roof, all of which contributed to the progressive and conspicuously modern design of the house. The Paris style is a true American creation developed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Wright was part of an impressive group of talented architects known as the Prairie School, operating in Chicago at the turn of the 20th century. Wright said of the style, the prairie has a beauty of its own and you should recognize and accentuate its natural beauty. It's quite le quiet level. Hence gently sloping roofs, low proportions, quiet skyline, repressed, heavy set, chimneys, and sheltering overhangs, low terraces and outreaching walls, sequestering private gardens. The shape and form of the prairie style house was distinctly different than previous domestic architecture. It was listed individually on the National Register of Historic Places on October 30th from 1982 and locally designated as a landmark in August of 1991. And it is currently split up into, I believe, four apartments. Three condominiums. Three condominiums. Condominium. Oh, the granite walls everywhere. <laughs> that is really cool. Great big trees. <laughs> and the walls. Just, all this is Mount Airy granite. Just goes and goes and goes. There's a huge granite quarry in Mount Airy. That's where all this came from. It's all over the place in Greensboro. Look at all the people on this tour. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Bishop Park Circle. Which is original to the hmm. property. You can see it back there. And it's also stone by Slosher. And then the developer built these two, uh, built additional condominium units. And two of them are here. And there are, I think, two more in the back behind the main building. And those condominium units are similar in style and size to the, um, to the carriage house. Which, and each of those, I think, uh, these are two units each. These the, the, the newer the newer buildings. Who was Mrs. Baker? Mrs. Baker's was the widow of Mr. Mr. Baker. The Lathams owned it, and Mr. Latham developed Latham Park, which is across on the other right. side of Wendover. And Mr. and Mrs. Baker bought the house from Mr. And Mrs. Baker bought the house from Mr. And Mrs. Latham, and then Mrs. Mr. Baker died, and Mrs. Mrs. Baker was about. This high. She wore high heels. This high. <laughs> my, mother, my mother used to come over here and see her. That's how I know all this. <laughs> and uh, I knew her. I know her grandson who still lives here now. So, not, not in the house, no. No, because it's sold. So he actually brings up a great point. Um, a lot of the houses that we talked about tonight have names. Uh, Latham Baker House, for example, and how a house, specifically a historic house, gets its name is Latham, which was the first family and what the, and the family the house was built for. So that's typically the name of a historic house, the first family that lived in the house. But on the other case, like the Bakers, you'll get either a family that was prominent in the city that was um, 
very important that made the house important equally just after the owner or like the bakers they were equally as important but they lived in the house for probably the longest amount of time um, as a family as in its original state so that is a, a good example of how a house a historic house gets its name okay so we are going to end the tour here i am so sorry for all the technical difficulties um it was a challenge and i learned a lot um, so thank you so much for coming on a Preservation Greensboro tour. We do this oop car to the left. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we do, like I said at the beginning of the tour, we do this every summer. Um, this year we incorporated new tours such as the campuses like UNCG, Bennett, Guilford College, a and um, Grimsley High School, and now I can pronounce it correctly. Yeah. Um, and hopefully next year we'll start um, in April, going to September, and we're going to try to do even more, even newer, not newer, historic, but new to us <laughs> neighborhoods as well. So if anybody needs a brochure, mom, raise your hand in the back. Yeah. She has all the brochures back there. There you go. Um, so please feel free to take a brochure and uh, keep track of us on Facebook or our website and you can also sign up for our newsletter. A newsletter goes out once a month, beginning of the month. Um, we don't really send you emails outside of that and it has all of our information in that. Yay. Yay.